we are going to look at when do we use each of the counting rolls. We only have three, so this is a little bit simpler, um, but this will kind of look through the questions you should kind of ask in your mind as you encounter problems that use counting rolls. Okay? And we'll review our counting rolls as we do this as well. The first question you should ask yourself on a counting roll um, problem is, is there repetition? Is repetition allowed? Is repetition allowed? So are you able to use something um, again? Uh, once you select it, can you select it again? Um, so for example, um, how many zip codes are possible? Well, you're able to use the number one every time. You could have a zip code of five ones. So that would be yes, repetition is allowed. And when repetition is allowed, we have to use this general multiplication rule for counting. Okay. Um, the permutation rule and the combination rule do not allow for repetitions. They use them up as you go through. Um, and so if you do allow repetition, then you have to use the multiplication rule. And the multiplication rule says that you take the, um, the number of times that the first event can happen, times the, pro times the number of events that the second event can happen, and so on um, in our sequence of events. And that will tell us the number of ways that we can have our sequence of events. Okay? So let's look at an example of the zip code problem that I mentioned. If we have a zip code, which is five digits, um, how many possible zip codes are there? Okay. And zip codes uh, do allow for repetition. My zip code is 37311, so it uses a 7 twice, it uses a 1 twice, so we do have some repetition that is allowed there. Um, and so we, we are have to use our multiplication rule. And so we take the, we look at each event, and each event here would be um, choosing each number. So how many ways can we choose the first number? How many ways can we choose the second number? Those are our events. Um, and we multiply the number of ways that each event can happen together. So how many ways can that first event ha can happen? How many ways can we choose um, the first number of a zip code. Well, there are 10 digits. Don't forget about zero. Um, so there are 10 single digits that you can use that could be that first digit. And we'll keep it simple and we will allow zero to be one of them. It's usually not. Okay. And then how many ways can we choose that second digit? Well, there's still 10 digits. How many ways can we choose the third? We can use the same digits again. So there's 10 ways there fourth, and fifth. So this is the number of ways that we can choose um, a zip code, number of different possible zip codes that we have. Okay, 100,000 possible zip codes. And we could even make this a nine or we can, um, so that we don't have a zero at the beginning and, and different things like that, but just simply looking at um, a multiplication rule problem like this. We can move on with it as well. Okay. But if the answer is no, we cannot use repetition, then we might be able to use um, some permutations or combinations. Uh, but which one? So the next question you need to ask is, does order matter? We know that, um, that with permutations, that we do count the orders. We do count all different orders of the same um, same set of objects. So we count all the different arrangements. So order matters with a permutation, um, but it doesn't matter with a combination. So what we're really asking ourselves here is do we want to count all the different arrangements of the same group of objects or people or whatever? So I'll write that as well. Do we want to count all different arrangements? Do we want to count all different arrangements of the same group?
If we do, if order does matter, the answer to this question is yes. Permutations do that. And if the answer to this question is no, I don't. I don't care about all the different arrangements. And combinations will do that. Okay. So permutation we call, uh, a lot of times in class, we call it NPR. Okay. Um, we have a P in there. And this you can do in your calculator the formula for that. You can just enter that in. Um, and then combination is in CR. Okay, so that's what you are, you're selecting that in your menu from your on your calculator. Okay. So let's look at an example of both of these, when order matters and when order does not matter. Um, so let's say that we want to pick um, three students from a class of 10, but we are going to assign them um, president, vice president, and secretary. Okay, so let's pick three students from a class of 10, but we're going to assign them different roles. So in that case, if we want to count how many different um, ways we can select these three students, we do care about the order. I mean, it makes a difference whether I'm president or whether I'm secretary, okay? Um, it, it, even if I'm, picked, if I'm picked, it matters which one I am, president or secretary. So I, I do care about order. I want to count um, selecting the same group of three students but arranging them differently into these three different roles. So that's another thing you want to kind of look at when you look at a permutation that clue you into permutation is are there different roles assigned or are they winning something different? Then you're probably wanting to count the different arrangements. Okay. So I said there are 10 students. We're selecting three of them. So this would be a 10P3. Okay. Select 10 students, choose the president, vice president, secretary. How many different um, groups can we come up with? That would be a 10P3. They're assigned different roles once again, so it's permutation. And this ends up being 720 ways. Okay. Let's look at an example of a combination role where we don't care about the order. If we were just taking these 10 students and we were picking three of them to form a leadership committee. So we're not assigning them different roles, we're just picking them. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what number I'm picked, okay? It just matters if I'm picked or if I'm not. So I don't care about the order in this case because I'm, I'm just being on a three-person committee that doesn't have any roles, that so we're all doing the same thing. So in that case, we know that we're going to be using a combination. The order doesn't matter. And of course, repetition is not allowed, so we're over here. Um, and that would be 10C3. So how many ways can we choose three people from 10? We don't want to count all the different arrangements of the same three people because uh, they're, they're all doing the same thing. So this one ends up being 120. Much smaller because we're not counting all the different arrangements of those same three people. So this one should always be smaller than this one if your N and your R are the same. So that's another check um, as to which one you should be using if you, if you get confused as to which one counts the order and which doesn't. Use the same N and the same R and your permutation is going to be bigger because it does count all the different arrangements. Another thing I want to note is that anytime you're using a permutation, you could also use the multiplication rule. Permutations just keep things a little bit simpler. If we were to have large numbers, um, like if we were to have 50 students and we we're choosing 10 of them, it's a little bit of a pain to use the multiplication rule um, when we could just simply put into our calculator 50p10. Um, so we could use the multiplication rule here even and take 10 times 9 times 8 because there's 10 ways to choose that first student. <laughs> Repetition is not allowed because we couldn't choose the same student again. Um, so we have 9 here and then 8. This also results in 720. Okay. All right. So that should help you as you make decisions as to which multiplication rule to use when ask yourselves these questions.